Over the past few weeks, we've looked at medieval castles, palaces, forts, and even medieval fortified homes. However, what was the housing like during a medieval period for the everyday person or the peasants? Well, in this video, we'll look at medieval houses and what the conditions were like. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Medieval houses or homes where peasants lived were usually dark and damp places, and also very cold, and depending on the weather, it could actually be warmer on the outside of the house, and certainly much lighter than on the inside. If you had more money however, things would be very different, and the nobility and lord tended to live in luxury. Even those people who belonged to the higher part of peasant society, such as a bailiff or a reeve, would build well-built houses and better furnished medieval homes. The earliest form of medieval houses were probably the worst and the weakest, and today, very few or none at all really survive. This is due to the fact that materials they used were easy to get hold of and resource, so many of the houses would be made from wood, and so on. These were very easy to be set on fire, and also were very poor when offering protection from the weather, so they were rather rubbish. Once a peasant had made their house, they weren't usually upgraded or changed due to the fact they couldn't afford to do this, so they eventually fell into disrepair, and they were then abandoned if they hadn't succumbed to the elements or fire. Peasants probably weren't happy with their homes, and would enviously look at the well-built homes of the richer nobles, and the manors or castles of the Lord. However, things did change, but at a huge cost. In 1348, the Black Death swept across the country, and the pestilence killed millions of people, and the English people had never seen this sort of thing on a big scale before. In fact, so many people died that there was a shortage of peasants and serfs, which led to a large number of wealthy landowners being desperate for peasants who could work on their land. This was a huge problem, as peasants now were in high demand, and had the upper hand on the richer people, and could, in a sense, earn and certainly demand more money than they previously had earned. So the landowners had not enough workers to work the fields, so they would now begin to look further afield for peasant workers, and attracting peasant labour was now a competitive business. Peasants would move across the country, working for whoever was paying the most money, or whoever offered the best deal. Because of the increase of pay for peasants, they became wealthier, and one of the first things they did was decide to build better housing. New medieval houses were in demand for the lower classes after the plague, and new building techniques helped to produce stronger and better homes. A style called wattle and daub was invented that allowed peasants to build taller and wider medieval homes than they had before. These homes were often made of sticks, mud and straw. Wattle is made by weaving twigs in and out of uprights, and after this was made, it was daubed in a mixture of clay, straw, cow poo and mutton fat. Once this had dried, a mixture of lime plaster and cow hair was used to cover the surface and seal the cracks. This might sound rather primitive, however they provided much more room and offered protection against the weather. This building technique also allowed peasants to have a fire now in their house. The framework of the house was made from timber, and the filling of spaces filled with water and daub would make a strong hard wall. The peasants could also make a hole in the top of the thatched roof, so the smoke from the fire could go out. The fire could also be used for cooking, however the house would then subsequently smell of smoke, as would the peasants. Because of these new techniques, the first two-storey medieval cottages started to appear, with the top floor being reached by a ladder, rather than a staircase. The nobility and higher class people in medieval society at this time would live in much better houses, and some of these homes are still standing today, showing that they were made of a much superior quality and stronger materials. The medieval houses of the wealthy were usually made from stone, unlike the peasants' simple wattle and daub homes. The earliest forms of medieval cottages that the nobles built were from around the 13th century. The lords would live in huge and picturesque cottages, which had many different rooms inside. An example of this is Wheating Castle, which was made in the 12th century, and was a rather huge and grand manor house which consisted of a service block, great hall, apartment block, and many other different rooms such as kitchens. As time progressed in the later medieval period, houses became made from brick, however brick was very expensive. Some nobles would furnish their homes with brick, however many would use locally resourced materials, such as at Wheating Castle in Norfolk, it's close to a flint mine, and flint was used to make the castle or medieval house. As the Tudor period was ushered into England following the Battle of Bosworth, housing tended to change. 
Tudor medieval houses were half-timbered houses which consisted of strong wood, and this was used for both the walls and the interior. During this time, roof tiles also started to make an appearance, and chimneys were added to the medieval homes to take away the smoke fumes from cooking on the fire, or keeping the house warm. Also one innovation was the use of glass windows, which would allow light inside the house, and also fresh air, giving the home good ventilation. In more high society Tudor homes, there would usually be a separate floor of the house just for the servants, or a separate building for them to live in, built close to the residence. So overall the medieval period saw big advances in house design and build quality. At the start of the period, houses were rather awfully built, however towards the end, even the peasantry had a rather substantial home, which was built with some degree of skill. One of the biggest things that ushered in change was the Black Death, that created a situation that allowed peasants to earn more money briefly and spend some more money on their homes. If you visit many towns across England and the UK still today, you'll see some excellent examples of Tudor housing, and even some medieval homes that are still standing centuries on. Once again, thank you for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Thank you once again for watching.